If you consider yourself as a connoisseur of bishoujo culture, you probably heard of Amagami, a dating sim released on March 19, 2009, originally for the PlayStation 2. If my memory serves me right, its animated adaptation Amagami SS and SS Plus became quite popular even in the English-speaking part of the world, leading to the 2011 PSP Ebikore edition receiving a fan-made English translation patch. And if you've either watched or played Amagami, you'll understand what I mean when I say that, upon its release, Amagami's cultured approach on high school romance impressed even the most seasoned bishoujo otaku gamers, who were already accustomed to anything the genre had to offer at the time. Amagami, in a single sentence, is a gentleman's game. Keep in mind, since the post-internet era, the Japanese word for gentleman became a homonym for a pervert, all thanks to this iconic character shown here. And by that, I mean the game spot on captured the awkward lustfulness of sexually repressed teenagers. And yet, everything is written sincerely with an unexpectedly sweet and innocent overtone. Yes, it's definitely cringe, but that's because Amakami is, perhaps unintentionally, a brutally honest manifestation of the virgin otaku psychology who's torn in the midst of hot sexy stuff while feeling threatened by female promiscuity. And the artwork of Takayama Kisai happened to perfectly balance between such ambivalent desires. Takayama later went on to produce and direct his own project called Seiren in 2017, which is an anime TV series sharing the Amagami timeline. We all know how that turned out. I can only assume the show must have sucked real bad if Takayama's art and Amagami's name wasn't enough to save it from bombing. Regardless, artwork and sex appeal alone was never enough to make Amagami. Rather, its success was a product of over a decade of experience. Amagami actually follows a lineage of a series dating back to the age of Tokimeki Memorial and Sakura Wars. The series was called True Love Story, and the three franchises were dubbed as the Triforce of Dating Sims. Yes, Amagami belongs to the True Love Story series, and whether you've heard of it or not, now you know its part in the history of video games. Welcome to my 14th Breaking Up Dating Sims, a series where I analyze and review dating simulation games of old and somewhat new. That was a pretty drawn out introduction, but I felt the need to draw your attention to the link between True Love Story and Amagami, in a hope the latter serving as an icebreaker of a sort, still being somewhat relevant with the English speaking fans and whatnot. So before further pressing on with the legacy behind True Love Story, I must warn you that the whole thing may be a bit long and confusing, but I'll try my best not to bore you. First, from this point forward, I'll abbreviate True Love Story as TLS, because I'll have to be saying the title a lot. The series starts out with TLS 1 released in 1996, soon followed by TLS R, 2, and Fandisk all released for the PlayStation. In 2001, TLS moved on to PlayStation 2 with TLS 3 and TLSS, the S standing for Summer Days and Yet. Due to the disappointing sales of the PS2 TLS games, the developers dropped the title True Love Story while continuing on with the series. Kimi Kiss in 2006 is in every sense a successor to the TLS lineage, with its narrative around the theme of pure love and the game mechanic of simulating communication with the heroines. Meeting with success, Kimi Kiss was followed by an unsuccessful anime adaptation. And finally, Amagami, released in 2009, reached the influence never before seen in the franchise. The series expanded further with Photokano in 2012 and Reco Love, named as the TLS 20th Anniversary Project in 2016. Things came full circle with the release of Love R in 2019, dubbed the True Love Story's 22nd Anniversary Project upon its initial advertising stage, which was later retracted for unknown reasons. Sugiyama Ichiro, the producer of the TLS and its related games, and Mino Taro, the character designer illustrator for Konami's Love Plus, joined forces under this project, and the Dream Team received much push from the marketing department. Love R was localized to China and Korea upon three months of its release. However, the game was reviewed poorly mostly due to lack of content. Nonetheless, Kadokawa Games, the publisher for Love R, is still selling DLC outfits as recent as April 2023. The only surviving series in the 90s dating sim Triforce is under a life support via DLC sales. Kind of like how the DOA franchise became a money-making zombie as the series is practically dead but is still cashing in from the Venus Vacation gacha sales. Regardless of how the series switched between multiple developers and publishers during its decades-long run, every one of these aforementioned titles are grouped under the TLS umbrella due to the overlapping philosophy behind its game logic and the notable individuals attached to their development. Besides the core concepts that made up the series, which I repeat, is communication and pure love, other elements inherited from TLS were heroines who are grounded in reality, no technicolored hair, 
and encouraging the players to pursue one romantic interest in a single playthrough. The producer, Sugiyama Ichiro, is involved in the entire TLS legacy with the exception of Amagami, though the original PS2 version does credit him as executive producer. He went on to produce Potokano, Record Love, and Love R. Lee Tsing Ha, the name Taiwan born Takayama Kisai used before rebranding himself, is seen in the graphics section in the credits for the first TLS. Takayama has taken part in the graphics department since the very beginning and took over the character design starting from TLSS after the original character designer, Matsuda Koji, retired to work as a pharmacist. Takayama went on to illustrate Kimi Kiss and of course, Amagami, where consider he reached his peak in artistic expression. The producer and writer for Amagami, Sakamoto Toshihiro, is credited in the first TLS for writing and editing the manual. He appears in the special thanks section in the later TLS series and was heavily involved in the development of Kimikis. Legendary composer Iwadare Noriyuki has worked in all the TLS and its related games. It's amazing the number of projects this man takes at the same time. On the other hand, not every game developed by the TLS staff is categorized under the TLS lineage. For instance, the developer Game Crab, credited for TLS3 and TLSS, collaborated with Circus and Broccoli of the DC Da Capo and Galaxy Angel fame to release True Tears in 2006. You might recognize the title from the popular animation series, but the show has little to do with the game it was based on besides sharing the title, and neither the show or the game is related to the TLS series. In 2008, presumably in an attempt to hitch onto the then-growing Otome game bandwagon, the TLS staff developed their first and so far the last Otome game titled True Fortune, which was also produced by Sugiyama Ichiro, composed by Iwadare, and follows the same game mechanics as TLS but for some reason is not included as a part of the saga. Sugiyama and Sakamoto would team up on mobile rhythm game School Star Dream series in 2015, which ended its service about a year and a half of runtime. <sighs> And now we cover the gist of the history of the TLS series and its relation to Amagami. It's about time to get to the actual game. Let's travel back to approximately 27 years, when True Love Story, the first entry to the TLS series, was released on December 13, 1996. An improved and discounted version of TLS, True Love Story, Remember My Heart, TLSR for short, will be released on December 11, 1997 for the PlayStation and July 24, 1998 for Windows. Today I'll be reviewing TLSR, since it's a widely considered to be the complete version of the first TLS. The main difference between the two include the opening ending songs, the latter having a faster loading time, improved UI, a load menu, thank god, new events, and an option to walk home with the protagonist's little sister, albeit only three times per single gameplay. Upon release, the general consensus surrounding TLS was the game suffers from bad artwork, but the character-focused game mechanic and communication minigames makes it an absolute winner. Indeed, compared to the high-contrast, cel-shaded color palette of the 90s with shoujo aesthetics, TLS's soft, airbrushed touch and all the characters having either black or brown hair gave a calm if not dull feel to the overall visuals. And back then, I too considered TLS's art style downright ugly. I remember finding the enormous size especially distracting. Looking back now, I appreciate how good the anatomy is compared to other games of the time, and how the quality of the art remains consistent throughout. In fact, the plainness is what made TLS stand out the most, and something that appealed to the fans. Considering how much the success of Sentimental Graffiti's aggressive marketing campaign relied much on the attractive-looking character designs which were closer along the line of realism than something like, let's say, Dosokai by the same character designer more or less, I think there certainly was a demand for a more ground-to-earth art style at the time. In TLS, the protagonist is a second-year student attending Aozora High School. One day, he is hit with sudden news that he will be moving away to another city in a month due to his parents' circumstances. The player's little sister, Misaki, insists that they don't tell their peers about the transfer because she wants to spend her last month with her friends like she would in any other day. Your objective is to control the protagonist in pursuing one of the six available girls he encounters in the following month and confess his love for her on the final day. It's not like the protagonist was hell-bent on dating girls before he found out about transferring to another school, nor he already had a crush on a girl. So I can only assume after attending two years of high school with no particular interest in engaging in a romantic relationship, the guy figures out he'll be moving out to another city in a month, and he decides he might as well get a girlfriend before doing so. Sounds like a pleasant person. 
Before starting True Love Story, first you must pick a season the game will be set on. Some romanceable characters and events are exclusive to a certain season. Then you get to name the protagonist and customize his stats, each being grades, athletics, style, personality, and attitude. Stats are fixed once you make your choice since there is no stat raising system in TLS. The stats influence how much the girls are initially attracted to the protagonist, but it won't affect the gameplay very much. And... Before really starting the game, let's take a brief detour, shall we? Come on, it'll be fun. So, by now, you'll know that most of the dating sims of the 90s were strongly influenced by Tokimeki Memorial 1 in one way or another. But TLS, on the other hand, might have taken direct inspiration from a relatively obscure dating sim that predates and perhaps inspired Tokimemo. Which means Tokimemo and TLS series could be two separate lineages of dating sims branching out from a single order, kind of like humans and monkeys. Let me explain. Hatsukoi Monogatari, directly translated as First Love Story, is a game developed by Game Technopolice under the genre of First Love Stat Raising Simulation, released on March 5, 1993 for the PC-98. The protagonist who will be transferring to another school has three months to impress the girl he loves by raising his stats. The player is given an option to start on any month of the year. Similarities don't end there. Hatsukoi Monogatari has two affection stats, impression and rating. See how the affection stat in the TLS lineage are divided divided into admiration and friendship. But there is a reason why Tokimeki Memorial and not Hatsukoi Monogatari became known as a forerunner establishing the dating sim stable. And that has to do with Hatsukoi Monogatari being a shitty game. The entirety of the game was plagued with ill-paced sluggish interface, lack of events, and frustrating mechanics which prevents you from proceeding onward. The player is tasked to play a game within a game, a text-heavy adventure at that, and its story having nothing to do with the main plot. Not to mention that this particular inside game, Denno Tenshi, had more content than the main game that is Hatsukoi Monogatari. Game Technopolis would go on to release the real Denno Tenshi approximately 8 months later on December 17, 1993. The developers had an opportunity to take out Denno Tenshi altogether to make a more complete game in Hatsukoi Monogatari's PC Engine port, released on April 28, 1994, which still predated Tokimeki Memorial for about a month, but they never bothered. They did take off the option to start the game on any month of the year and changed the time limit from 3 months to 1, so just like TLS. Oh, and some details in Denno Tenshi were slightly rewritten. Yeah. So the idea was certainly there, but it took Konami to perfect the art with a shorter, simpler, and more addictive gameplay, along with the option to pursue multiple girls. But we're talking about true love story today. I promise there won't be any more detours, so let's get straight to the point, starting with the characters. TLS has a total of 9 romantic interests. 5 are available for all seasons, 4 are exclusive to each of the 4 seasons. Therefore, a single playthrough gives you 6 heroines and unlike Tokimemo, the protagonist is forced to acquaint every one of them. Just like the character design, the overall writing of the game tends to lean towards what we call realism. The TLS girls are much more three-dimensional and grounded in reality compared to Tokimeki Memorial. One example being they possess various hobbies and interests that are not limited by their character trope. You won't be seeing a crazy mad scientist schoolgirl and an artist who's gifted in every genre of art for being an artist's character. Asuki or Hayakawa and Daisuke or Ichiro. There are four variations to the player character's default name, but I'll go with Hayakawa Daisuke because that's what's written in the TLSR manual. He's just a dude possessing some mostly harmless sexism, such as casually judging the femininity of a tomboy character, typical to a Japanese man. Misaki. Daisuke's little sister Misaki is a product of the era before thirsting on fictional little sisters became the norm in the bishoujo scene. So she acts according to what you expect from a real-life sibling, especially compared to someone like Mia from Amagami. As in she's not too close to her older brother, but cares enough to tell him his affection stats with the girls. But since TLS after all is a bishoujo game, there is a mandatory protagonist walking in her room when she's changing event. Misaki gets her share of fan service in the TLS fan disc, along with Kimiko the protagonist's little sister from TLS2. Osuga Toru He's the generic protagonist buddy who's constantly horny but has zero chance of ending up with a girl. With the way he dresses, I can see why. Yanagisawa Shuichi Yanagisawa is popular with the girls, including Misaki, thanks to his wholesome attitude, good looks, and high grades. He harbors feelings for Daisuke's childhood friend, Nozomi, and even confesses his love for her at some point in the game. In this specific manner. 
I know Kabedon wasn't a bean back then, but he still looks kinda of threatening. No wonder why she refused. Yanagisawa gets top score in the school exam for most of the time, and he sure is smug about it when Daisuke praises him. However, in rare cases where Daisuke places first, he doesn't even show up to share a single dialogue. Despite what everyone says, Yanagisawa seems like a bit of a jerk. Mikami Saeko Saeko is Daisuke's homeroom teacher. She teaches English and is a married mother of a two-year-old. Because TLS is not an eroge, she remains unromanceful, but she even has a swimsuit standing sprite with her son. What a tease. Katsuragi Ayane Ayane is TLS's first heroine and a very vanilla one to say the least. Basically, she's the school idol who's good at everything. Ayane loves tropical fish, flowers, and writes her own music. Whether intentional or not, she might have a creepier, darker side unbeknownst to everyone else, though it's never confirmed in the actual game. Things might have been different if TLS was released at the time of Amagami. Not to mention Ayane is voiced by Kikuchi Shiho, who voiced the creepy stalker koala girl in Tokimeki Memorial 1. Hirose Nozomi Daisuke's childhood friend Nozomi's short hair might give an impression that she's a sports-loving tomboy, but she's actually a serious artist and a caring person who's also an excellent chef. I feel Nozomi received a way better character portrayal than Ayane, having more interesting romantic events for one. Not surprising since she's the only romantic interest acquainted with the protagonist from the very beginning, so we just have more time to get to know her better. Koto Ikumi Ikumi is an all-around talented athlete and a member of the track club. As a Bokuko character, of course she's burdened with the pressure of having to behave more feminine. Out of all the romanceful characters, Ikumi is the one with the most fanservice-y illustrations. The event CG puts quite the emphasis on her legs, and the animated opening for TLS does tend to focus on her boobs. Honda Tomoko a typical bookworm who loves dogs, teacups, and flowers. I can only say Tomoko reminds me of Ginrei from Giant Robo the Animation, but only because of her hairstyle. Minami Yayoi A first-year student and a best friend to Misaki, Yayoi is obsessed with fortune-telling. She also has a crush on Daisuke from the start of the game. This has nothing to do with my like or dislike of the character. In fact, she's voiced by Tange Sakura, which automatically makes her cute. But that certain hairstyle always makes me think that her head would end up on the point of a wooden stake. You know who I'm talking about. Kasuga Chiharu Chiharu appears exclusively on spring season. She's an uptight member of the student council who's very stingy with money. She's one of those misandrous bishojos who eventually opens up to the male protagonist. She also likes flowers. Amano Midori Midori is a summer exclusive character who, character-wise, resembles Yuko from Tokimeki Memorial 1. She loves goofing around, good at video games, and hates studying. Come to think of it, she's just Yuko with different quirks, such as liking reptiles and sneaking into the school's home economics classroom to make her own Japanese shaved ice. Kusanagi Shinobu Daisuke's third-year senior and autumn exclusive character, Shinobu, like many senpai types, is a responsible individual who takes care of her juniors. Shinobu valiantly practices Aikido but is not aiming to be an athlete, as she's planning to take charge of her local family shrine. She of course shows up in a Miko outfit. Mizutani Yurika Yurika, in my opinion, is the prettiest girl in the game because she suffers the least from the oversized eye syndrome. She is the winter exclusive character attending the neighboring Shirayuri Girls Academy. Daisuke acquaints Yurika when she and the other swimming club members come to Aozora High School for practice when their own school's pool gets closed for renovations. Yurika is a rich girl with a reserved personality who tries hard to hide her love for cute things. Oh, and she is a fart event. While not as suggestive as its successors, TLS had their gentlemanly moments. Just like Toki Memo, the gameplay in TLS 1 is very simple. Weekdays and Saturday are school days. Sundays are reserved for dates, but if you don't have one, you can take three free actions. Your choice is to either wander aimlessly around the town hoping to catch a character-related event or buy gifts for the girls, on which items are available are at random. On a school day, the player is given four free actions. Daisuke can roam around the school and, huh, you guessed it, trigger events at random. Being the first series of its kind, TLS gives no indication on where the girls are. At least they mostly hang around in spots where you expect to find them, such as the music club member being in the music room after school, but that's not always the case. Upon visiting a place and a romantic interest happens to be there, you can raise their affection by talking to them. 
In fact, Daisuke is so starving for a conversation, he would stop any girl he comes upon without leaving you the choice to let them pass by. Of course, if he's not already close to the girls, they'll get creeped out and run off, but that still somehow increases their affection stat. If the girl's affection stat is high enough, a romantic event will occur at a chosen location. After school, you may randomly encounter a random girl, and this time, you at least have an option to ask her to walk home together. If she accepts, the game enters the series' famous after-school conversation minigame. Here, you can choose from 18 to 21 conversation topics and 6 actions, including giving presents you've purchased on Sundays. The objective for this minigame is to successfully ask the girls out on a Sunday date. It's easier said than done since the after-school conversation is… what can I say? Frustrating. Keep an eye on the monitor gauge thingy on the upper left corner. The most outer curve indicates the distance between the school and destination. The conversation ends once the arrow reaches all the way to the left. The inner curve is the heartthrob meter. Higher affection stat starts you off with a fuller heartthrob meter, while it increases and decreases depending on how invested she is in your conversation. This gauge must be almost full in order for her to accept the date request. The heart-shaped icon represents the doki-doki-ness of her heart. Gain in the heart throb meter is relative to the size of the heart. However, over-enlargement of the heart will cause her to end the conversation prematurely and run for survival, or due to being embarrassed depending on the way you see it. The same goes for the opposite. If the girl is bored, her heart will shrink and she'll cut the conversation short. Selecting a particular topic with a high enough heart throb meter enhances the chance to enter the special conversation mode, resulting in greater increased rate for the heart throb meter. Some special conversation topics can be selected repeatedly to form a chain conversation. The empty boxes on the leftmost corner are reserved for the event topics, which only appear under specific conditions, such as after seeing a romantic event with the girl you're talking to. The event topics, for most of the time, boost the heart throb meter by a huge margin. But depending on the topic, it may push her to be stricken with cardiomegaly. Besides the event topics, as far as I am aware, there is no rhyme or logic behind selecting the correct conversation topic. For example, a character who practices Aikido doesn't always respond positively to the Aikido a related conversation. That does make sense in real life, but still, this is a game I'm playing. So I did multiple reloads, read and watched playthroughs and walkthroughs, and even dipped into the forbidden zone of safe states to look for a pattern, any pattern, only to conclude that they're pretty much random and totally dependent on luck. The most secure method is to load and repeat until you meet the girl as often as possible during school since every encounter raises affection. Have her heart drop meter sufficiently full by the third or fourth week. Bombard her with her favorite gifts and event topics if any of them are available, and cross your fingers that the conversation topic you chose will increase her heartthrob meter close to max. Because of this grueling after-school conversation minigame, it's rather exhausting to go after more than one girl at a time. And that was indeed what the developers intended. While each playthrough is on the short side, the need for load scumming still feels like a chore. The game also has hidden hurt feelings that and bombs like in Tokimeki Memorial. If you don't talk to the girls in school often enough, she gets pissed, lowering the affection rating for every other girls. Which is totally not fair since whether you can meet her or not is entirely up to the RNG gods. At the very least, the chance of this ever happening is very rare. Another way to increase hurt feelings is bumping into a girl with sufficient affection while walking home with another girl. While skilled players can ask more than one girl out on a date on the same week, you can't be in two places at the same time, so you're required to choose between the two. Of course, the girl you skipped out on will get a drastic increase in her hurt feelings then. Every day, Misaki, the protagonist's little sister, perhaps as an exchange for keeping your mouth shut about the transfer, provides you info on the girl's affection stat visualized in a graph called Misaki's Love Check. The x-axis indicates admiration, the y-axis, friendship. You must move your romantic interest's affection icon all the way to the top left, starting from the bottom right, as in having max admiration and friendship, in order to achieve the perfect ending. Every character has a preferred direction. For example, Daisuke's childhood friend, Nozomi, maxes out the y-axis before moving to the direction of the x-axis. Tomoko, who in truth had a crush on Daisuke since year 1, moves along the x-axis before going up to the y-axis. The title heroine, Ayane, is in between, and her affection icon inclines inversely at an angle of 45. Certain events can alter their preferred direction. After knowing that Nozomi is scared of lightning, her affection icon will start to shift across the x-axis. Unlike the later TLS-type games, admiration and friendship have no effect in the endings and purely exist for flavor. 
unless you want to collect every single event in the game that is. See, there are 9 blocks in Misaki's love check. Certain events occur only while an affection icon remains within a specific block. So, to give you an example, on a normal playthrough, it's impossible for Nozomi to reach the D or G block because of her tendency to crawl across the Y axis. The only way is to load scum until you trigger that particular event that changes Nozomi's preferred direction. These events tend to occur under very specific conditions, and you'll often miss the block by a narrow margin. Dates are not required for the romantic ending, Ayane being an exception. However, it does yield a huge gain in affection stats and more importantly, adds depth to the characters and enhances your gaming experience. And seriously, what is a dating sim without a date? In TLSR, you have a total of 3 Sundays you can ask a girl out on a date. You have no control over choosing the date spot. The decision is made either by Daisuke himself or the romantic interest. The first date is always the same, and the location of the second date depends on the season. But because getting the girl to agree on a date in itself is rather tedious, you'd be lucky if you managed to ask her out on the last Sunday during the first playthrough. The developers must have been aware of that fact, since the third date event doesn't have an event CG attached to it. If you ask a girl out when her affection is too low, there's a chance she'll later go on to call and cancel the date. So always be sure to save. The dates follow your run-of-the-mill dating sim format. Select a dialogue choice, see an event CG. However, the most crucial factor that determines the quality of the time you had with the girl comes after leaving the dating spot. You can choose to continue spending your time with her, either in a fast food restaurant, cake shop, or cafe. And your decision greatly alters her impression on you. Like, eating at a fast food restaurant after watching a movie in the theater is treated as a big no-no. Fast food is only acceptable after a strenuous exercise such as swimming and cycling. But even that depends on the character, and there indeed is someone who prefers going to the cafe after a swimming session. Nozomi even comments that she's hungry, but isn't happy if you take her to the fast food place, which is the only place among given options where you can buy a meal. The right answer is the cafe, where she orders a single cafe ole. Unless there is this weirdly specific dating culture in Japan, I'd like to think a lot of the developers were bachelors at the time and had a rigid idea regarding the ideal date with a girl. Once settled with your meal, you'll be facing several dialogue choices. Your answer plus choosing the right place to hang around after the date will determine whether her time with you were worth it or that you sucked. Excluding the bad ending, there are three variations to the romantic endings in TLSR. The real true ending, old true ending, normal ending, and thankfully, they are not all that different. Daisuke's day in this city finally comes to an end, and his friends and acquaintances share their goodbyes. Understandably, the romantic interest gets upset and feels betrayed that Daisuke, for this whole time, kept her in the dark. She runs off, and Daisuke must choose one out of the six locations to find her. Daisuke's confession scene stays exactly the same for every romantic endings. The only difference is in his monologue in the epilogue, and the letter his long-distance girlfriend sent half a year after his transfer. Daisuke's monologue in the normal and old true ending, as in the ending for TLS1, faced criticism because of the line, In all honesty, I feel like the physical distance between us will bring everything to an end. In the newly added in, real true ending in TLSR, his monologue is completely replaced, where he says, With the distance between us, I feel like our relationship has grown even stronger, and mentions their frequent exchange of phone calls and letters. The contents of the letter from the girlfriend remains identical, but in the normal ending, you don't get to see the photos you sent in together with the mail. Also for the normal ending, you get a different ending credit screen and music. That's pretty much it. The bad ending happens, obviously, when Daisuke fails to pursue any of the romantic interests. In TLSR, there are two more variations to the bad ending where Misaki waits for her brother at the front gate, or under a specific condition, Osuga comes to bid Daisuke farewell. In the days of Tokimeki Memorial clones and eye-stabbing color schemes, the TLS series firmly stood its ground, providing dating sim fans with a unique and different appeal, at the very least opening up more options and further exploring the potential of the dating sim genre. While the series was not as huge as Tokimemo, TLS was successful in acquiring their own niche fandom and had multiple drama and music CDs and comic books throughout the years of its continuous legacy. Sticking to a chosen concept for over a decade, yet improving upon the writing and game system to keep up with the times in itself is an impressive feat, considering only a handful of dating sim series from the 90s survived into the 21st century. Being the first of the series, True Love Story is certainly rough around the edges. 
I wasn't a fan of the random encounters, the fact that it was impossible to catch certain romantic events without a walkthrough, and the brutal after-school conversation minigame. I mean, I get it, it must be tough to make a girl fall for you in a month. Too bad you'll likely end up abusing the game system for most of the playthrough, rather than getting to feel more attached to girls like the developers intended. At the bare minimum, TLS is a complete, not bug-ridden, playable game with an interesting concept where its successes improved upon and by no doubt was the starting point to the sensation that was Amagami. And that about does it. Thanks for watching while I time after time diverted from the main subject because reasons. I believe that you're used to it by now if you've watched any of my other videos. I'd like to argue it was out of absolute necessity. Hope you found this fun and or useful in some way. Be seeing you in the next video.